Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of complex numbers. And if I talk about the question which is given to us here, the question tells us let A is equal to a set where it says theta belongs to 0 to 2 pi. So theta is moving from 0 to 2 pi and further we have been given an expression that says 1 plus 2i sine theta upon 1 minus i sine theta. This expression is given to us as purely imaginary. What I mean by this idea is when it is purely imaginary means there is no real part existing for this expression. Further we have been told whatever elements of set A you get for these expressions we need to find sum of all the elements in that set A. So we need to figure out all the angles that will verify this expression. And we need to find those elements sum for the set A. And we have been given four options here. One is 3 pi, second is pi, third is 2 pi, and the last option given to us is so we need to figure out which one of the following four options is the correct answer for the question given to us. Let's figure out that. So if I try to write the expression that is given 1 plus 2i sin theta upon 1 minus i sin theta, this is given to us as a purely imaginary number. So first to find this expression and to simplify this, we need to get rid of i that is the imaginary part from the denominator. To get rid of that what I will do is I will multiply by the conjugate of that denominator that is 1 plus i sin. In the denominator I will again multiply by 1 plus i sin. If I multiply this I get this to become 1 plus 2 i sin theta if I multiply with 1 plus i sin theta 1 gets multiplied with 1 plus i sin theta plus 2i sin theta gets multiplied again with 1 plus i sin theta. In the denominator, we have a minus b into a plus b, which is a square minus b square. So you get i sin theta the whole square. Further, if I try to solve this, I get 1 plus i sin theta plus 2i sin theta plus 2i sin theta into i sin theta that makes it 2i square sin square theta. Further, if I try to solve this denominator, I get 1 minus i square sin square theta. Further, if I try to solve this and simplify this idea, I get 1 plus 2i square, i square in this case we can write that as minus 1. Here also I can write i square as minus 1. So I get this simplified to become 1 plus i sin theta plus 2i sin theta that is nothing but 3i sin theta plus 2 into minus 1 so minus 2 sin square theta. So instead of plus, if I write it as minus, so minus 2 sin square. Upon, if I try to solve this further, I get 1 minus minus 1, so 1 plus sin square. So we have this entire expression simplified. Now if I try to write it in the real and imaginary form, I can write that. Without i, we have 1 and minus 2 sin square theta divided by 1 plus sin square theta plus i, we have 3 sin theta upon 1 plus sin square. So I have this entire expression simplified into my complex form that is of a plus ib where a is the real part. So this is your real part and this is your imaginary part. Now we have been told that in this entire complex number is purely imaginary means only the imaginary part exists for this complex number that means that real part which is a that is equal to zero 
If I equate my real part with equal to zero, let's see what I get. So if I equate my real part, I get one minus two sine square theta. It is equal to, or upon I should write one plus sine square theta. That real part is equal to not one, but it's equal to zero because the real part does not exist. So I get this entire expression. Simplify it to form 1 minus 2 sine square theta equal to 0. So 1 becomes equal to 2 sine square theta. From this, I get sine square theta is equal to half. Taking square root on both sides gives me sine theta is plus minus 1 by root 2. Now we get sine theta is plus minus 1 by root 2. And if I know that theta is going from 0 to 2 pi, means you are having the angle for one entire revolution. And if I see sine theta in the first quadrant, so we need to check for all the four quadrants where sine theta turns out either plus one by root two or minus one by root two. So we know that in the first quadrant, sine theta turns out one by root two. When theta is equal to pi by four, that is 45 degree. So if I write down my elements of set A, I get the first value of theta as pi by 4. In the second quadrant also, the sine theta is positive. And again, it occurs at pi by 4. So we get this angle as pi minus theta. So this becomes, this is pi by 4. So from the positive x-axis, if I find the angle, it is pi minus theta. So pi minus pi by 4. That is 3 pi by 4. So you have the other angle also, 3 pi by 4. Now in the third and fourth quadrant, we will have sine theta as negative. So we get minus 1 by root 2. So in the third quadrant, if I measure this angle, this entire thing till here, it is pi because it is 180 degree and this additional angle is pi by 4. So I get this pi by 4 plus pi is your total angle. That makes the total angle as pi plus pi by 4, which is 4 pi plus pi, which is 5 pi by 4. So you get this angle as four, 5 pi by 4. And the last angle, sine theta again, it is negative minus 1 by root 2. That occurs for clockwise angle of pi by 4. So if I go anti-clockwise and find the entire angle with respect to positive x-axis, we have the total angle as 2 pi, so this measure becomes 2 pi minus pi pi. That is 8 pi minus pi, 7 pi pi. So you get that also as 7 pi pi. So these are all your elements which are present in set A, which satisfy the idea of being sine theta as plus 1 by root 2 or minus 1 by root 2. Now if I just figure out some of all the elements in this set, it's equal to, everyone has the same denominator, so if I just add the numerators, pi plus 3 pi plus 5 pi plus 7 pi upon 4, I get that as 12 pi plus 15 pi plus pi is 16 pi, so 16 pi by 4, 4 ones are 4 fours are, you get that answer. So you get some of all elements in the set A as 4 pi, and if you see the option that matches here with the question, that matches with option D. So D is the correct answer for the question given to us. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions on complex numbers. So first we multiplied and divided by the conjugate of denominator to get rid of the imaginary part in the denominator simplified our entire expression to become in the form of a plus ib as a complex number where a is your real part and b is your imaginary part since this entire expression was given to us as purely imaginary we equated real part with zero so once i equated the real part with zero i got sine theta as plus or minus one by root two that occurs in the four quadrants four times so we get four elements in set a that were pi by four three pi by four five pi by four and seven if I add all the elements in the set A, I get the answer becoming 4 pi that matches with option D. So D is the correct answer for the question given to us.
I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. And we are going to continue our series of questions on JWE pains as well as Kevin Tetwell. So stay tuned for more videos to roll out. Also, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Do share these videos with your friends who are involved in the preparation of the questions on JW. So that they can also take the benefit from these questions which we are solving on everyday basis. Thank you.